So in, in answer to that bit, do they have to be looking at the camera? That depends on the kind of portrait you're going for. Now, the other thing that we've got here, Jackie, that I wanted to talk about, which is to do with the angle at which you're taking the photo. Because the where the camera sits makes uh, can make quite a bit of difference as to the way the head shapes and the power relationship between the viewer and the sitter. Now, what you're doing here, because your daughter's got her head tilted back, you're looking up her nose. Her jaw is closer to the camera than her eyes are. Her eyes are naturally dropping down in order to look at you, because if she goes wide-eyed, it's really difficult, looks really strange. So, you know, so she's looking down, so her eyes are narrowed and her jaw appears to be squarer and larger proportionally to her eyes. Now, that in itself tends to be a more power picture. If you think of, for example, for those who can remember, all those photos we ever used to see of, say, President Obama, they were always taken from slightly below because you were always looking up at him, which gave him an immediate position of dominance, of power. And it made his jaw look larger, his eyes look smaller, which is a sort of slightly more masculine trait which has then become associated with more of a power stance. Now, if you compare that to, for those of you who remember the days of Princess Diana and how she always seemed to be looking up out from underneath her fringe. Now, the moment you the camera is above, in order to look up, I have to open my eyes wider. My eyes are wider. Proportionally, they are closer to the camera now than my jaw, so my jaw becomes more oval. It's a more slightly more submissive um, situation, but because the eyes are wider and the face is more oval, it's also a more feminine, traditionally feminine look. So from the looking down and leaning forward to leaning back the, and, and you're looking up, this dramatically changes the shape of the face and the sense of the power relationship and the interaction between the person. So hopefully that starts to give you a little insight here that when you're creating a portrait, where the angle you place the camera at, if you want to sort of create a slightly more, you know, if you want somebody to appear warm and friendly, you tend to sort of shoot from fractionally above. If you want them to appear strong and powerful, authoritative, you shoot from slightly below. And what you've got here, I think, is she's leaning back. So it is a more, it's a strange thing because it's more of a power pose in that sense, except for the fact she's sitting very relaxed against the tree. And, you know, when we look at the, uh, this version, you know, it's, this isn't a power position. This is a pretty young woman sitting at a tree. It's a soft kind of thing. Um, so consequently, what we've got is a kind of conflict of story. We're not really getting the picture we're expecting. She's sort of in a power pose and you're looking up her nose and you're seeing the, sort of what feels like a larger jaw, but without the authority that's going along with that. And I don't get the feeling that when you take a photo of her sitting at a tree with the sun dappling through the leaves, that that was necessarily the story you were going for. So hopefully, Jackie, that gives you a bit of insight when it comes to portraiture um, to understand that the angle of the camera that you're at will make a big difference. So I hope, that, I hope you found that useful. If you found this useful, let your friends know and hit subscribe.